Welcome to Business and Finance TV, where we're at the RHA Gallery in Dublin uh, to talk to Nick Wheeler of Charles Sturridge Shirts. Nick, you founded Charles Sturridge Shirts in 1986. What has the experience taught you about entrepreneurship since then? I think I'm one of those people who always wanted to have, I always wanted to have my own business. So if you set your heart on something and do it, and that's all you've done, you don't really know anything else. You don't know anything different. So it hasn't taught me anything relative to anything else. What it has taught me is that having your own business is like never doing a day's work in your life because you're doing what you love doing. And I think people need to find something they love doing where it doesn't feel like work. And, and, and that's what I've done. It's just been a, an amazing experience. That's not to say it's all ups. There's been lots of downs too, but it's been a sort of constant challenge, constantly changing, constantly different and, 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 and invariably great fun. The KPMG Inspire series is all about sharing inspiration with fellow entrepreneurs. What advice would you have for up and coming Irish entrepreneurs? I think it's an interesting one. I think the, the important thing about being an entrepreneur is that things do not always go your way. And what you need is you need a lot of self-belief. I'm a big believer if you believe in something passionately enough and you have a real passion to succeed, then I think anybody, anybody can do it. And you will get kickbacks, you will get people closing doors in your face. But I think it's really important that you push on through. You just can't, you know, you, you can't be the sort of person who gives up. You have, to, you have to keep going. And I think one of the wonderful things is, is, I think Warren Buffett said, the eighth wonder of the world is compound growth. You know, if you just keep going, and every year you do things a little bit better, you don't have to grow that fast. But if you keep on growing, small percentage growth, compound growth is the eighth wonder of the world. And you will end up, after 30 years, you can be a complete idiot like me, and you end up with a great business. Speaking of growth, you grew Charles Church shirts from zero shirts to in excess of five million shirts. So what next for your company and what next for the industry? I think early on you have to decide what you want to be. And I, and I think what I decided early on, I, you know, I wanted to be the best shirt business in the world. And I think if you have your own business, whatever area you, you're in, you need to decide what you want to be. And I think invariably, if you want to be the best in the world at something, it's a good start. And so, you know, we sell five or six million shirts a year, but there's a hell of a lot of men out there who, who don't wear our shirts. And it's about making people, you know, what, what we say is we want to make it easy for men to dress well. And I want, you know, every man in the world who works in a suit to be wearing our shirt. And, and it's, it sounds silly in a way, I'd love to have been an artist or a potter, but I'm a shirt maker. And I love the fact that my middle names are, are in, people's, in people's collars. And I just want to sell shirts that customers love. That's your motivation. Looking back over the 30 odd years, what was your entrepreneurial style? I think my style was always, yeah, I think in business, business is full of cliches. And, and one of them is, it's all about the people. It's about the people in your business. And people will always tell you that. And that's all well and good saying that, but what do you do about it? And I think my style was that I recognized my weaknesses and I recognized that it was very important to get people into the business who could do things better than I could. And once you get somebody in to do it better than you can, you have to leave them to it, you have to trust them, and you have to go on and do something else. And so I hope people would say in the business that I'm a good delegator, and that I let people get on with it, and I also make people feel that this is their business. You know, I've always said I'm never gonna sell this business. Um, and I want people to feel that it is their, their business. I sit them down when they start and I say, look, if, if nothing else happens in this business, if you do nothing else, I want you to think every day when you come in, I want you to think, if this was my business, what would I do? And if you'd make a change to the business, then go ahead and make that change. Don't be afraid of the change. Don't be afraid of failure. It's fine to fail once and to learn from it. And uh, I think that's probably my style. It, it's, about, it's about delegating people who are, who are much, much better than I am. Your trajectory in the business was that you went into a traditional business, you built it up, and then there was an explosion in online growth as you entered the global marketplace. Can you identify one single milestone in the development of your company? I, th I think you've probably hit the nail on the head there. I think the single biggest thing for us in the development of the business was when the internet was invented. Because we were a traditional mail order business. Mail order used to be quite down market and suddenly it became sexy and suddenly it became the way 
you know, mail order was a, always a small section of the market and suddenly it was massively growing. The online side massively growing and, and the bricks and mortar declining. And I think that transformed the business. You know, when the internet was invented, well, God, when it was invented, I'm not quite sure when, but we, we launched our first website in 1998, which was pretty early for websites. And we were right on the sort of the cusp and we rode that wave. You said that your ambition is to uh grow the number of customers, the number of men in the world, focus on the number of men who don't wear your shirts. Do you have an overview on the Irish market? Do you have many Irish customers? Well, we have, I mean, we have four core markets at the moment. One is um, obviously the UK, one is the US, one is Germany, and one is Australia. And I, th I think coming back to that point about, you know, there's an awful lot of men out there who wear our shirts. We were looking for markets that were preferably that spoke English, Preferably that had a had a, a currency that we already we, we, we were already used to. We, we run euros in Germany, and Ireland was an obvious market. So, to about six months to a year ago, we started marketing in Ireland, and um, it seems like you know Irish, the Irish have been fantastic. They love our shirts, which is great. Um, I hope everybody loves our shirts, but I think the Irish are obviously very good. Uh, they have great taste in shirts, and they seem to love our shirts. Very good. And my final question for you, Nick, what are the challenges for your company at the moment? And how do you propose to overcome them? I mean, Brexit is obviously the topical business subject of the day. I think the challenge is, if you're not careful as an entrepreneur, you can always look outside for your challenges. You look outside your business. You're, at the very simplest level, as a retailer, retailers will blame the weather. They'll blame these funny external factors, when in reality, the weather might be bad, it might be too hot when they've got lots of winter clothes or it might, or, the, or, or vice versa, but ultimately it comes down to how good you are as a business. And I think the same with Brexit, you know, Brexit, there's a lot of uncertainty out there, you know, people are worried about Brexit, they're worried about their futures, they're worried about their jobs, you know, people just don't really know what's going to happen. But I think what we have to do is we have to focus internally, because we cannot change what's going on outside. We just have to be damn good at what we do and give the customer exactly what they want. And I think as long as we work on that, we work really hard on that, then you know, I believe we'll, we'll, we'll carry on growing and carry on succeeding. Very good. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you so much. Great. <laughs> Thanks very much.